Welcome to the Insider Report. Welcome to a special episode of the Insider's Report. I'm your host, Errol Tucker, and joining me, Bill Wood in Los Angeles, California, and Peter Keene in, this time, Daytona, Florida. How you doing, gentlemen? Excellent. Doing Excellent. wonderful. This is a, this is a really a very special episode of the Insiders. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely, definitely. And uh, Peter has uh, brought Troy Fliss. Uh, you, Peter, you're actually at the uh, Spirit of Daytona uh, garages, aren't you? Yeah, Earl. Um, Spirit of Daytona has moved into a new race shop just this week, and I have Troy sitting here to my left. And I mean, it's it's all good times here. Well, we have to start off this, the, the segment by saying congratulations, Troy. Thanks, guys. It's, uh, it's definitely been a long time coming, and uh, we're hopefully uh, going to stay up on top here for the rest of the season. Hey, hey that's guys, that was going to be my question. What the hell took him so long to finally win one of these bitches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a while. It's been a while, but uh, it's, been, uh, it's taken us a long time to get here, but uh, I think we, uh, we did it the right way. And uh, the big thing's going to be that we can uh, stay up here. I think uh, we're not here because it was a fluke thing, and we uh, we really worked hard, and our guys have worked really hard on this pole program. So uh, really excited to get to the next race. Um, it's kind of good that we get to gloat for a couple weeks here be between the races, but uh, on the other side, I'd love to be racing right. this weekend if we could. Well... Alex Gurney from the Gainsco team said that, you know, Spirit of Daytona has the special sauce when it comes to Barber. You know, you qualified on the pole this year. You qualified on top last year. Two years ago, you were qualified second. Obviously, you guys have something uh, right about that track. Yeah, I mean, we don't do anything different there. So I don't know what it is or why that racetrack's good to us. Um, I think uh, Antonio Garcia has a good line around that racetrack. I think he uh, likes that racetrack because it does uh, tend to the drivers of getting a grip and conserving tires. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. So we learned back in the days we had the uh, Continental cars that uh, tires were a huge deal at that racetrack. So going there, that's right. always the number one thing on our list is to conserve tires and um, you know, get a car that's real drivable for the driver so they don't have to overdrive it and they can uh, keep a good pace the whole session. And I mean, I gotta add to Troy on that. I mean, it takes real discipline for these guys not to slip the tires at that place. I mean, if you slip the tires right. once, then that's lost forever. <laughs> and um, if you watch those guys, you know, they start sliding all over the place, you know, Max the Axe likes to do that and they just go backwards at Barber. I mean, it, and I think the same thing's coming for Homestead. Troy, this is Bill in uh, Los Angeles. It always fascinates me when teams come together and something happens, it's like a light switch comes on because you you bumble around in the dark and then all of a sudden, bam, you're at the top. And certainly I hope you could stay there. But what happened with Spirit of Daytona? What turned the corner for them? Really, I mean, it, it has. We have a, made another big significant step uh, we moved in a new facility here in Daytona. We're just moving in this week, but uh, this has been in the works for uh, about eight months now. We got a better relationship with GM. We've done a ton of wind tunnel testing and a lot more development with GM and the, and the input of GM and our team has been growing. Um, the driver lineup was huge for us this year with Richard coming on board. Um, he's not only an excellent driver, but him and uh, Antonio get along very well. They both drive the same style race car, which was another step in the right direction. We've also uh, hired on a new right. car chief, um, Gary Grossenbacher, who uh, came on with us uh, January of this year. And uh, Gary has been in racing for a long time and kind of uh, I've watched him and seen what he's done. And I, I didn't even think he was available for the position we were looking for. But I, uh, I called him up before Daytona there and said, hey, would you want to do this? And he jumped on this and it, it's great because we have a great group of younger guys that don't have the downright experience or the time um, of the little things and, and understanding what uh, Gary can go back in history and saying, hey, this caught us out once before, this caught us here, which that helps. Um, and it helps me a ton because it lets me get away from the car, do the uh, outside looking in more and uh, try to just rub on the car. You know, instead of always working on going faster, we. Uh, we based this program last year on just fixing our problems. Um, you know, don't worry about how fast the car is. You know, once all of our problems are fixed, 
then we'll worry about going faster. But uh, right now, so, that's, that's what's made the difference, and it's been a, it's been a great deal. Little things have made a huge difference, and uh, with this win, I think it's going to be another big step for our whole program because we haven't had this win in a long time, and I've got guys that never have won in, in motorsports, and uh, I think it's going to be hard when they walk in a homestead with their heads hung high and you know Ganassi's and the Wayne <laughs> Taylors and the Actions, all those teams are going to have even a harder time. I mean. You know, every time I put these guys under the gun for a pit stop or anything, they pull through, and now they're going to have that ego a little bit on their back, and they're going to be able to they're going to be able to do better than seventeen and a half second pit stops. So and, and Troy, let I me. Like that. I mean, we for for la- at least the last few years, I think we've had the fastest pit crew on 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 pit lane in Grand Am, and you know, due to bad circumstances, those guys haven't got the the notoriety they deserve, and now that they have a win. I mean, it's just going to give them more confidence, and we're just building. I mean, I, people haven't seen how good this team's going to be. So uh, let me ask this this follow up because you mentioned GM. Part of the business model for uh, Grand Am was to minimize manufacturer involvement in the the teams and in the program. Uh, do you think that we're approaching the point where? Uh, the, if, without factory involvement for wind tunnel time and technology and being able to put factory drivers into your car, are we getting to that point where uh, we're going to have all the winners are going to come from two or three teams? Um, I don't believe that. I mean, because we're a, we're a smaller program. Um, you know, all of our information goes to all the GM teams. So whoever the team is that is giving the, getting the information from the factories, um, are giving it out to all the teams. So we all have the same tools. It's who's going to process those tools and use those tools the best um, to be winning, you know, to be the winning and most uh, successful team. Um, you know, I don't think Grand Am doesn't want the factory involvement. I think they really do. Um, they know how big that is um, on the side of uh, all these, all of the GM cars and everybody involved. Um, we need to get more um, of it, but it, they need to, the new factory involvement or the factory involvement Grand Am wants, I believe, is how GM has gone about this, where it's not coming in and just supporting one team. Um, they're supporting all of their teams. They're supporting everybody from us to the GT to the Continental Series. Um, we pass that knowledge on. Whatever we learn, we, we pass on, and that's what Grand Am wants. They just don't want a single effort coming in. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. Troy, let me ask you, now, the, the next race is Homestead. Uh, you said, you know, tire management was key in uh, uh, securing that victory at Barber. Uh, the, the track surface at Homestead is said to be, uh, you know, rough on tires. Um, what's, you know, how is that going to play as far as your strategy going into that next race? Excellent. <laughs> we, uh, we had a great car on tires at Barber, and uh, we, had a great t- we had a great car at Homestead last year. Um, you know, we got behind a little bit on uh, tire strategy at the beginning of the race, and uh, we, we had to watch what we did, and we come back through the field, and, uh, you know, we got an altercation there with, uh, I think, five laps to go. We were the best car, I believe, at that point, and we were in a great position to be on the podium, if not having a win there. So um, I'm really excited to go back there. Um, I got two good drivers that do understand the tires and, and understand, and Richard's getting better and better because this is his first year on the Continental. So I think uh, this was a great race for us to roll off at, and now Homestead, he's going to do even a better job on conserving tires. And we do some things, you know, a little different as well. Um, at, at Miami, we'll have a little bit different deal. We'll give the drivers some tools on making sure they don't spin a tire, just like Beach said. Um, because it is, it's so big. It's you, you, you spin the tires off one corner, you've just given up probably two or three seconds in your run um, just because of that one time. So it makes the drivers really work right. hard and uh, makes the team work hard to get a car that's set up that doesn't spin the tires. So uh, I'm really excited. I just want to get down there and do it. Great, great. Well, I have to say, it, it, uh, you know, it's a good start for the season for you guys. I know you had a little uh, tough break at the uh, 24 hour um, and, and had to spend a little time in the pits there fixing uh, uh, a drive crank train issue. But obviously the second race here in the season, you guys have uh, put the, the system together well. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing you guys at that homestead race to stay up there on the top. Hey, wait a minute, Errol, before we go away, that we Peter always takes over the show, but since it's 
his boss is there. I'm going to take it over this time. What are you going to do, Troy, uh, when you go to Homestead, Miami? How are you going to keep the team off of some, uh, uh, maybe some uh, last-minute celebrations at uh, South Beach? Uh, no, our guys, are, our guys are really good about that. I was surprised that we didn't have a bigger celebration after the win, but uh, they all know this isn't uh, easy, um, you know, Results matter. Um, you know, these guys really work hard for what they do, and they're not going to go out there and blow it up, <laughs> celebrate too much. But uh, we're going to have a little party here before we go down there, and uh, we're going to go down there, and it's game on. And uh, we can't leave nothing on the table because those teams that are out there are all gunning for us again. They know that we're going to be good down there. They know what this team's all about. I mean, it was really cool uh, Monday morning when uh, everybody called me uh, from Bill Riley to Gary Pratt and people from d different series to drivers I've had 10 years ago. Um, and uh, it's time to celebrate right now, but after that, uh, we, we're back to work and we're moving to the new shop and the guys are ready uh, ready to go. So we're gonna uh, get, get down there and try to put on the pole again and we're gonna try to win another one. Sounds good, sounds good. Well, congratulations on the new shop. Congratulations on the win and we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys at Homestead in a couple of weeks. Thanks guys, all right guys. Thanks, thanks Troy. So, folks, that's going to end this special segment of the Insider's Report. Uh, remember, you can always jump on to Go Racing TV to see the Insider's Report every, uh, every other week. Until next time, you take care.